Well, I went down to my storage unit. I found a IDE CD-ROM drive. I dug through one of my other cable boxes and found an IDE cable with connectors to, to attach two IDE devices. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add this device into the chain. So this cable goes on, I don't know which way. The red goes to pin one. So it's gonna go on. Well, it would work better if I could hold on to it. This is the end of the controller. Red typically goes to pin one. So according to the silk screen, that's the right direction. This cable's been coiled up for quite a while. Hmm. This is going to make stacking this interesting. I guess it's going to have to go. I don't know if the position on the cable makes a difference or not. Whether the end is master, I don't know. We'll find out. CD-ROM drive. Hopefully that's the right, and it is orientation to go on here. Actually, let's see how this is jumpered first. This is jumpered as master, which we don't want. Jumper link loose. And it looks like cable select. I'll actually put it on. And let's do cable select first. Since the drive itself is set to cable select. There it is. Now hit the capacity for, well not quite, but really close for the, uh, I guess that went in, and power there should go in. Boy, I remember now I'd, the sea of cables on these machines was so painful, so, with that all stacked and cabled, Let's uh, see if it'll start and boot from the... I don't have drivers on it for the CD-ROM drive, but I do have a drive light on the CD-ROM drive, which is a good thing. Not sure what it's waiting for. Well, that answers that. I'm guessing the cable end is important, though I'm not sure how it would be. And I'm hoping the cable's good. So I've isolated the CD-ROM drive. I'm just on the hard drive. Okay, and it's booted from the hard drive, so something in the cabling it doesn't like. Oh, I can see this is just going to be a laugh a minute. figure out how to get this all connected up. Pull the screws out of this hard drive so it'll sit on its side. Obviously I'm going to need a case at some point. I'm 
got to work a three and a half inch floppy in here as well. The uh, install floppy for Windows 90, 98 I have is a three and a half inch drive. So now. This cable will go on this direction. That now means power's got to be swapped to here. On the hard drive. It's keyed this way. And it receives power as well. I don't know how much of this is actually in frame. Sorry, I've set the hard drive and the CD-ROM drive up on their ends. I've got the cable end to the hard drive. We'll see if it'll now boot. Well, I heard the CD-ROM drive initialize. It stepped the heads back and forth. It's not happy about something. I suspect that selecting both is master. So now it's a matter of playing with jumpers. So I will set the CD-ROM drive to be slave and try it that way. hard to get in there. Let me go there. And there. And we do it again. Let's see if we get a hard drive flare again. Nope. So let's at least see in the hard drive. So there's a chance that CD-ROM drive is going to work. Like I said, I don't have drivers. So now the next step, tear this back down and get a three and a half inch floppy in there. Uh, isn't this going to be fun? Give you a bit of a view of what I'm doing. needs to go away. Got lots of length for the A floppy. So I think I'll stack this this way. because of the demands of the, well, what I believe to be the demands of the IDE cable, although it probably doesn't matter now which connector goes where. Do I have power leads long enough to reach all the way over here? I don't. Well, it just gets more and more entertaining. slide back any further than there. Nope, these are going to have to sit up on their sides. Power. What have I done here? I've got something on upside down. the CD-ROM drive adapter cable on upside down, which is why the power connectors weren't aligning. Now can I get power to reach over to both of these? 
maybe. Power. Power. Now to figure out where I can set this floppy drive. Adapter. Actually, I've got the wrong floppy drive. I don't know that this one's any good. But I do know this one's okay. It's just a matter now of which way is pin one. Pin one is in. Quite the unstable stack. The floppy's five volt only. So, <clears throat> with that mess. Should be drive A. I've got five and a quarter inch down here is drive B. Hard drive sandwiched in CD-ROM drive. Let's see what we get. Hell, I heard the memory test run. And we are booted from the hard drive, so this is definitely progress. Now to go find my Windows 98 install media and give that a shot. So I've got a Windows 98 second edition full retail uh, install on the CD. I got that off a French website and downloaded it. And then I found uh, floppy images for the install floppy. This one uses the RAM disk. Let's go ahead and see if that'll uh, boot from floppy. Sounds like it's booting from floppy. This is the image I think it is. It'll load various CD-ROM drivers till it finds the ROM drive. Uh, start computer with CD-ROM support. I haven't installed Windows 98. Yeah, it's the Oak Technologies device name. Number of drives one, so it did see the CD-ROM. There is no PCI configuration in this. There's the Asapi Manager. PCI bus scan complete. I tried something called uh, try to. There's the RAM disk being loaded. So I know there's a mm, I think there's a full megabyte in this machine. So we don't have enough extended memory path not found. I have drive D. Nope. Okay, there was a second floppy image that didn't do a RAM disk. And that may be the one we need to use here. Uh, I've got a megabyte in the machine. I believe there's four 256K uh, memory sticks in it. Let's see what this does. Okay, so I saw the ROM driver find one CD ROM drive, which is encouraging. Device name Banana? I have no clue.
still reading the floppy. Drive R. <clears throat> yeah, Drive R is the uh, CD-ROM drive. You may be able to hear the head spinning back there. Well, apparently I can't install Windows 98 <laughs> on a 640K machine. Now I do know I guessed which SIM sockets to put the memory in. And I may have them in the wrong set. I didn't actually look at the manual, so I guess I need to go look at the little manual and figure out if I got the sticks in the right place. One step forward, two steps back. That just seems to be the way.